Hi, this is Natalie. Thank you for listening to Crossroads Church, where we are bringing a real God to real people. I believe you'll be inspired by today's message. Hey, good morning. Good morning. How was everybody? Good. Hey, I'm Joel. I'm the teaching pastor here, and uh, I'll be covering for the next few weeks. So we're going to be talking about letting it go at Christmas. And we're going to be looking at the stories of the different characters involved in the birth of Jesus and the things they had to let go of in their life to receive Jesus. And we're going to talk about how that applies to our lives. And this, is, this has become very real to me over this year. Because there's a lot of things that I've realized, wow, that's things, the world has changed. I'm going to have to let go of the way things used to be. So uh, we're going to talk a little bit about this morning about the story of Joseph and what he had to let go of. But this, uh, I wanted to tell you something about happened, that, that happened to me this week. Uh, I actually played drums for the night of worship. And, uh, and I, you know, the drums are back there if you didn't know that. Um, and it's, this, it's like a fully contained room there. It's, a, it's, a, it's like a cage. It actually gets very hot in there once you get, get drumming. Um, and I had a lot of time to think in there um, because practice Monday night took like three hours. And um, yeah, because we had to learn a lot of songs. So there's a lot of songs. So I'm sitting back there in there and, and I, I started realizing, you know, when I was 18, actually when I was 16, I decided that I wanted to become a professional drummer for a living. And that was all I thought about. Drums, drums, drums. I practiced two, three hours a day. I played in multiple bands. And uh, I mean, I I remember somebody showed me their yearbook from our senior year a few few years ago at a, 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 uh, what do you call these things, a reunion. And I remember, I I would always sign my name with a little, I'd make a little drum set. It'd be like a little circle with a little, that was the way I signed my name. I was obsessed with the drums. And I realized that was like so much of what I identified myself by. Everybody was like, what are you going to be when you grow up? I'm going to be a drummer. And I started playing drums a little bit when I was 18, 19. In fact, I went up to Nashville to try and get into a band. And I ended up playing, uh, played drums over here at Cornerstone Church with uh, John Hagee for a while. And uh, I was obsessed with the drums. But here's what's weird about it. I never think about the drums anymore. So I'm sitting in this room thinking, I was like, I was all about the drums when I was 18, and I was obsessed with it. That was my identity. And then I started thinking, what is my identity now? You ever had a moment like that? Like, who am I? And I started thinking, what am I? And I was like, well, I'm an outdoor adventure leader. And I was like, oh, wait, not this year. I haven't done any outdoor adventure this year. And I was like, well, what am I? Am I a writer? I'm not really a writer. I don't think of myself as like a writer. Um, and I was like, am, am I? Oh, God, no. Am I a pastor? <laughs> because I ha- cause here's the thing. Like, I grew up as a pastor's kid. And I always swore, I will never be a pastor. <laughs> never. I know what that entails. And when Pastor Marcus brought me on, he's like, hey, I want you to become our teaching pastor. And I was like, oh, I don't like that title. And he's like, whatever, add something to it. I was like, well, I'll be the teaching pastor in residence. That makes it sound a little less permanent. <laughs> and he's like, okay, whatever. Well, this year, all the stuff I used to identify with has like kind of been shut down. And if you haven't noticed, I've been up here a lot lately. <laughs> and I realized, oh my goodness. I can't identify myself as a pastor. In fact, when I get interviewed, I do a lot of radio interviews for my, uh, and and TV interviews for my book. And they're always like, well, what do we, what do we identify you at? As I'm like, I'm like, they're like, should we call you a pastor? And I'm like, no, don't, don't call me a pastor. Call me something else. Well, what are you? I'm like, I don't, I don't know. Just introduce me as Joel. (laughs) Because I dread this thing. Now, here's the thing I know about you. Okay. I know that every one of you in this room, there's something that you do, you have, 
who, where you're from, that you identify with, and you, you would say something like this. Well, I'm the kind of person who, you know, I'm the kind of person who plans everything out really well. And, and, but, but this year, you're kind of going, well, I'm, I can't even think ahead. Like, I'm trying to plan for next year, but I don't even know what's going to happen next year. And, and maybe if you're this person that's the planner, like, the, your identity's just been shot. You're like, I don't know how to plan right anymore. Or maybe you're the kind of person like, man, I am the person who's loyal to a fault. I will stick by people to the end. But this year, you're just, you just have no patience for that one person in your life. And you're just like, I'm, I'm over it. I don't want to hear them complain anymore. We go over the same thing over and over again. This is what my wife is saying about me right now. Um, he complains about the same things over and over. And you're like, I'm a loyal person, but man, they're pushed. They're like, I'm about to be tipped over the edge with them. Some of you, you say, man, I'm the happy person. I've always got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. <laughs> but this year, you're just like, I don't know where it went. I don't got it anymore. There's, there's all sorts of things. We Some of you used to identify with what you did. Last year, this time, you identified by what you did as a job. And then come around March, they said, hey, you're not going to be doing that anymore. And you're laid off. And all of a sudden, you're like, what am, I, what am I now? This year has been really challenging because many of us have had to let go of the things that we were proud of, the things we identified ourselves by. And we're kind of uncertain What's next? Who are we now? Anybody relate to this? You're real quiet, so I can tell. I started thinking, what are some of the things we identify ourselves by? So a lot of us, men, we identify ourselves by what we do. It's the first thing you ask a guy after you get his name. What do you do? <laughs> Especially in our culture, we're very driven by that. What do you do? And, and it can be very easy to be identified by what you do. And that's why a lot of times men in their 60s, when they retire, they die after they retire. That's what the stats say, because if their identity was wrapped up in what they do, it's like, well, I'm, a, I'm the CEO of X business. And all of a sudden you're like, well, what are you? I'm the X CEO. I don't know what I am anymore because they hadn't developed any identity other than what they did. I see this a lot with guys in the military. They were high ranking military guys and they get out and then they're walking around and they get disre disrespected by some punk kid at the grocery store. Do you know who I am? He's like, I don't care who you are. I'm like, well, I'm a former, very powerful person. <laughs> and you start to, and you, you get hooked in who you used to be and you start to question, who am I once I've lost that identity, right? Some of us, we, we get caught up in what we own. Like what you have defines you, what you drive, where you live. And I think all deep inside, most of us know that it's not really what we should identify with, but a lot of times we do identify with that stuff. We get caught up in where we're from. I was this guy I used to know all the time. He's like, man, I'm from L.A. And I'm like, How? you've been like in Texas for like 25 years, though. <laughs> yeah, but I'm from L.A. And people like in L.A., we don't do it that way. I'm like, you haven't lived there for 25 years. <laughs> yeah, but I'm from L.A., bro. Whatever. <laughs> what we used to be. How about this one? I joke a lot of times about Uncle Rico from Napoleon Dynamite. <laughs> Back in 82, I could throw a football over those mountains. And you still kind of in their mind, they're, man, they're the reliving their glory days of high school or college sports. Or here's, here's another one. I see a lot of people, and this, I'm going to step on some toes here, but listen to me. I see a lot of people that identify with what they used to be before they were Christians. And I hear them brag about how bad they were, but how Jesus changed their life. But they're like, man, back when I was in prison, I'd knife a guy without even thinking about it, Right? And it's like, whoa, whoa, should you be proud of that? But that's what they, they there's this, and, and the weird thing is people get hung up on this, what I used to be, and they tell their prison stories, right? But then it's like, but that's not who you are anymore. And it's cool what Jesus did in your life, but if you stick around with identifying with that too for too long, you're going to miss where God wants to take you. All right, I'm, that wasn't even my message, but here we go. We get hung up on our greatest achievements, Right? You ever seen that? I find myself going back to like the glory days of when things went really well for certain things. We get hung up. We get on our race. We identify ourselves by our race. And I'm going to go somewhere with this in a minute here because Jesus does not identify you by your race. Did you know that? Amen. By your gender, by your culture. We get hung up in our personality. We identify ourselves by, well, I'm just a happy person. Nothing gets me down except for this year, maybe. 
We get caught up in our virtues. And this is where things get really dangerous. Man, I shared that thing about human trafficking online. I'm a good person. I'm a really good person. And we think about that and we're like, man, I gave to the church this year, this week. I'm a good person. And we get hung up on that. And we're like, I'm the kind of person that even when nobody else is doing the right thing, I do the right thing. And we start to get a little proud because of it, don't we? Here's another one. Our spiritual maturity. There used to be this guy that hung around my family. He drove me insane. He would always come up to me like, Joel, you know, this morning I was reading Ezekiel 2711. Do you know what Ezekiel 2711 says? <laughs> And I'm like, no, Tom, I don't know offhand what Ezekiel 27, 11 says. Well, Joel, it says this. Do you know what that means, Joel? And I'm like, no, Tom, but I'm guessing you're going to tell me. What does it mean? And he'd go into this long thing. The guy drove me crazy. I tried to avoid him. And I realized later on, like now that I'm a little older, I realized that dude was so insecure and he wanted to be seen as some spiritual giant taking obscure passages from scripture and showing me how cool he was instead of me. We do that, right? Some of us identify ourselves by our happiness. And when we're not happy, we don't know who we are. And this year, you've, some of you are just frustrated. You're like, I don't even know who I am anymore because I'm, I'm a happy person that's gone. And then others of us identify ourselves by the self-sacrifice. I'm a self-sacrificing person. I just keep taking abuse even when I get abused over and over again because I'm a good person. Anyway, we all identify by those things. Now, here's my point this morning, okay? Y'all know I love you, so this is going to sound intense, but I'm going to explain it in a second here. God doesn't care about who you want to be or think you are. You're saying, what? God does not care about who you want to be or who you think you are, your identity. And I'm going to explain this in a minute because we all have something we're proud of. And we say, well, because I'm this kind of person, I would never do this. Because I'm this kind of person, I'll always do this. But God doesn't, God doesn't care who you think you are. Here's, what, here's the thing. God cares about who he knows you can be and actually are in Christ. And he's saying, you're hung up on some parts of your identity that I don't really give a rip about. What I want you to recognize is who you are in Christ because that's your new identity. Amen. Joseph. The guy who ended up raising Jesus had this situation happen to him. He had to let go of something. We know the story well, right? It says, this is how the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, the Savior of the world, happened this way. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph. But before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Who's going to believe that story? We say that every year, like, <laughs> sure, Mary. Because Joseph, now this is where it gets, it gets interesting. Joseph, her husband, he was faithful to the law. In another translation says he was a righteous man. It says, man, he was a guy that was, he prided himself on doing what was right. And it wasn't a bad thing, but he was like, I'm, this is the kind of guy I am. I'm a person of integrity. I do what's right. So he got put in a very awkward position because he's like, I didn't make her pregnant. I'm sure of that. But it sure looks like I maybe made her pregnant. So here's what ended up happening. He didn't want to expose her to public disgrace. So the crazy thing is he could have gotten mad himself and said, wait a second, how'd you wind up pregnant? She's like, an angel told me Jesus did it or the Holy Spirit did it, right? And you're like, yeah, right, right? So here's this righteous man and all of a sudden he's put in a weird predicament. He's like, I'm a guy that follows the law. I'm a good Christian. They didn't have Christians back then, but I'm a good follower. I'm a good religious person. And I'm in a very awkward position here. If I marry this girl, people are going to be like, yeah, sure, you didn't make her pregnant. I'm like, yeah, and then you're marrying her to clean up for the mess, right? But if, he, but if he didn't marry her, then she'd be disgraced. And he's like, and then I'm a horrible person for disgracing her when this thing happened to her. Very awkward position for a guy who's a good man. So he had in his mind to divorce her quietly. So he's like, all right, I'm going to come up with a way to do this in the most godly way possible. Here's what happens. But after he had decided on this, consider this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, don't be afraid to take Mary home as your wife because what's conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son and you are to give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. 
But he did not consummate the marriage until she gave birth to his son. And he gave him the name Jesus. This is fascinating to me because here's Joseph. He's a good guy, man. He's trying to live a good life. He's trying to do what's right. And God shows up and says, hey, buddy, sorry to put you in an awkward position, but I need you to let go of your identity as the righteous man. And I need you to do something that could expose you to scandal, to disgrace, to you having to lose your identity as a righteous man in obedience to me. And this is the challenge of walking with Christ. When Jesus shows up, he calls us to embrace a new identity. He says, all the stuff you're proud of, how well you've done in your career, your position at work, how good of a person you are, how righteous of a person you are, how you pay all your taxes and tithe every religiously, perfectly every, you know, down to the penny you tithe every week. He says, here's the thing. None of that really matters in my book. You need to take on a brand new identity. And here's the new identity in Christ. So now, don't get me wrong on this, okay? Because God created you and he made you unique and he made you diverse and he made you special. You are very special because God created you. There's nobody else on earth like you. But you cannot get hung up in that because that's not the core of who you are. And one of the biggest lies we have in our culture today is that you are your identity. And we have people running around saying, well, I'm a this, right? Well, I'm an African-American. Well, I'm a white person. And then all of a sudden there's division created based on that. Well, I'm gay. Well, I'm straight. Yeah, well, I'm African-American gay. Oh, well, I'm gay and African-American and a Democrat. Oh, well, I'm gay and African-American and a conservative. I'm gay, African-American, Christian. And like all these things expand, expand. And we're like, and it's kind of like we're almost trying to outdo each other with these secondary identities. And all the while, God's saying, hey, you're a human being created in my image. And all the stuff you're adding on to it, you're falling for a lie. That's not you. And that's the lie the world wants to tell you right. is to identify by a secondary identity and you'll never be content identifying yourself by your secondary identity. And this is the dangerous lie the enemy wants to tell you. And this is what creates division. That's why Paul, he said, guys, you got to understand something. I've been crucified with Christ. And, and if you've accepted Christ, you have too. And you don't long, no longer live, but Christ lives in you. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Your new identity is not anything secondary. Not what you do, not you, how you identify, not your gender, not your race. In fact, he goes on to say something that's really crazy. You ready for this one? He says, in Christ Remember that new identity we have in Christ Jesus? You're all children of God through faith. For all of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourself with Christ. So listen, there's no Jew or Gentile. There's no ethnic identity. Doesn't matter if you grew up in Africa or Asia or the U.S. He, God to God, you're just a child of God. Neither slave nor free. Doesn't matter if you grew up poor. Doesn't matter if you grew up rich, matter, oppressed, you know, the oppressor. God doesn't look at that. There's neither, this, this is even crazy. There's neither male or female. That's a tough one. Like, wait, what? For you are all one in Christ Jesus. If you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and, he is, and, and his heirs according to the promise. And here's the danger we run. Anytime you take a secondary identity apart from in Christ, you run the risk of making it your idol. Yep. Yep. And it's really dangerous because it, it starts to control you. You start to worship that identity. And a lot of times, and this is, this is the thing where God will oftentimes show up and he'll strip away everything you hold dearest to you so that you start to realize even if I don't have that identity, I still am in Christ. Amen. And that's what Jesus comes along and says, you got to let go of that, man. You got to let go of that. Yeah. You know? And, and the world will tell you, well, your identity is the most important thing about you. And Jesus says, well, 
anything you can come up with your, as, as your identity and anything the world's going to promote is not really who you are. Because I don't care about who the world tells you you are. What I care about is who I made you to be. Because I'm, I know you. And you are in Christ and that's enough. And don't let anybody lie to you and tell you any of those secondary identities. And that can be negative. Well, you're, you're divorced. Secondary identity. I'm in Christ. Well, you're single and you've never been married. Secondary identity. You've never been able to have kids. Secondary identity. Oh, you're such a happy, wonderful, loving person. Secondary identity. In Christ, you're enough. And when you start there, all the other stuff flows from that. The love, the joy, the peace, the patience, the kindness, the goodness, the gentleness, self-control. But when we start to try and identify with those things apart from our identity in Christ, that's when we become self-righteous. I'm such a loving person. No, you're actually a really mean person, right? But you start to tell yourself these things. You got to get honest. Stop lying to yourself and just say, all those secondary identities, I'm, I've made an idol out of them. And here's the deal, guys. I'm preaching to me because I get so caught up in who am I? Who am I? Who am I? And God's saying, hey, who you are doesn't really matter. I'm going to turn you into who you are. If you'll recognize that the foundation of who you are is in Christ. Amen. And that's your new identity. So I, I think this, the Christmas story starts with, with, in Matthew there, starts with, with, with us looking at Joseph and saying, here's a guy who really prided himself on how really good of a person he was. And I don't know if it was bad pride. I don't know. Didn't know. Not much is mentioned about Joseph. But we know this. God came in and said, I need you to let go of everything you've identified with so that I can fill you with what I say you really are and you can be found in that. And here's the thing about it. When you're found in that identity, it doesn't matter what people say about you. Amen. He walks around, people are like, oh, there's Joseph. Sure, I got married, pregnant. Sure. And Joseph's like, I've been crucified with Christ. I mean, he didn't say that because the Bible hadn't been written yet, but that's the reality of it. That's where we stand is I've been crucified with Christ and I no longer live. I'm a dead person. And you know, dead people don't get offended. Looking a little pale there, buddy. <laughs> they don't get offended because we've been crucified with Christ and our new identity is in Christ. And I'm telling you guys, if we can wrap our, our head around this, there are so many insecure people in this world who are latching on to wanting to find an identity and trying to embrace something. They embrace all sorts of weird things of, you know, if I just dress like this, people will accept me. If I just say I'm this gender, people will accept me. If I just say I'm this sexual orientation, people accept me. And God's saying, listen, all that's secondary. You need to recognize it in Christ. That's all you need because Jesus loves you just who you are. And Jesus doesn't look at your race, doesn't look where you came from, doesn't even look at your gender. It says none of that matters. All that matters is in Christ, you are a new creation. The old is gone, the new has come. And when Jesus shows up, the new has come. So don't fall for the lie. And man, please don't make your secondary identity your idol because it'll always let you down because all that stuff can be taken from you. Very quickly, we saw this year, very quickly, all that stuff can be taken from you. But you know what can't be taken from you? Who Jesus made you to be. God doesn't care about who you think you are. He knows who you are. And he says, you know what? I'm going to do whatever it takes to get you where I know you can be. And, and, and here's the thing. Corey Ten Boom said, hold everything in your hands lightly. Otherwise it hurts when God rips it out of your hands. So do that. <laughs> Just like open up your hands, man. All right, God, whatever, man. Whatever you want, surrender. Because he's got good plans for you. His plan for your life is what you'd want yours to be if you knew all the details. So just trust that plan. And don't, and Natalie said that a couple weeks ago. It was a powerful thing she said. I'll never forget where I was when she said it. She said, I wouldn't have gotten hurt so bad if I would have let go of what I was holding on to. And I was like, ah, oh, how many times has that happened to us? So anyway, simple message this morning. Actually, it's not that simple. It's actually the essence of what we're trying to figure out in this life is 
who, are, who we are in Christ. But I would encourage you guys, man, that first message, man, if you, this year, if you, if you feel like you've lost all that identity of who you are and you're wondering who you are, let me, start with, let me get you to start with this. In Christ, you have everything you need to accomplish what he's called you to do. And it may look totally different than what you thought it would be at the start of this year, but it's going to be all right. Trust me. And I'm walking right there with you. I'm not sure what the future holds, <laughs> but I know for certain God is doing one thing above all else, and he's making us recognize who we are in him. So you guys receive that? Let me pray for you. Father, we thank you so much for... Well, I just thank you. You don't recognize us by anything other than in Christ. Uh, you made us, you created us to be unique and special, and there's a, a different gifts you've put in us. But the only thing that matters is our identity in Christ, and everything is built off of that. So I just pray for anyone this... this this year, this man, it's been a rough year and we've been maybe questioning who we are anymore and the person we used to be and we feel like half the person we used to be and we just feel like we can't get, any, get our joy back or our hope back. Lord, I pray that we would, we would begin to recognize that our hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust a sweeter frame, but boldly trust in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord. In Christ the solid rock, we stand. We thank you for sending Jesus. And we let go of everything we've been holding on to in our identity so we can embrace our identity in Christ. If you do not have your relationship right with Jesus, getting that new identity, the identity you can hang your hat on, the confidence starts with making that confession of giving your life to him, recognizing he is the Lord and giving him control of your life. So if you want to make that start right now, we're going to say a prayer. And as you say that, if you say it, Jesus is going to come and take you from the kingdom of darkness, give you a new identity and transfer you into the kingdom of light. So let's say this prayer together. Lord Jesus, we repent of our sin. We turn from our way. We turn to your way. Help us to walk in your truth. Amen. If you just said that prayer, welcome to the kingdom of God. You got a new identity. If you are ever in the Seguin area, come visit us on Sunday mornings at 9 or 11 a.m. Or you can just download our app and receive our weekly messages right to your phone. Just text CC Seguin to 77977 and click on the link that you receive. May the remainder of your week be enriched with God's favor and blessings.